Good afternoon, everybody. It's a, it's a pleasure to be here. You know, legal writing is something that most lawyers don't find very sexy and very exciting, but I'm here to tell you that there's a way to make legal writing strategic, and there's a way to weaponize it. Now, m most legal writers see themselves this way, right? We're the, we're, we're the A-team. We're the special operations people that go in there. We get no thanks, we get no credit, but ultimately we win the day. That's how most of us see ourselves, and I've been a legal writer since about 2000. It's been a number of years. This is really what we usually look like. We sit in a room by ourselves, and we talk to ourselves a lot. But the fact of the matter is that legal writers, and those of you that do legal writing, it's a very important tool. It can set a framework to really help win, ultimately, and in court. Now, let's talk today about legal style, the style of legal writing. It's something that most legal writers don't really get into. All right. Now, when we're talking about that, we're not saying, we're not so much getting into what you're writing, it's not the substance, it's how you write it and how you present it. Now, let's be upfront with a couple of ground rules. All legal writing needs to be clear, it needs to be concise, and it needs to be easily graspable. That's a given. We're not talking about those aspects. We're talking about something different. We're talking about how you, he the voice that the reader hears when they read your written work product. It's your tone. Now, think about Hemingway versus Hawthorne. They can both write the same novel with the same plot, but it'll sound very different because they have different tones. I've noticed three different styles of legal writing. And again, since we're the A team, it's three A's. It's academic or traditional, it's aggressive, or it's avant-garde. And we're gonna talk about each of those and their advantages and disadvantages. Academic writing, that's what most of us are used to as lawyers. It comes now, wherefore premises considered, use of IRAC, long string citations, that's what we're used to seeing, and, and it's marked by attacking an issue, not another party or another party's lawyers or, or their credibility. It's not very offensive. Everybody can, kind of, everybody can kind of identify with it. It's sort of like vanilla ice cream. Nobody hates it, but nobody really loves it either. It's not everybody's favorite, and it runs the risk of possibly doing this. You can put your reader to sleep. Even a high-profile, sexy case can sometimes lose its edginess because of the way it's written, and especially when you use a conservative writing style. But it doesn't offend anybody. Aggressive is almost the exact opposite. Aggressive writing calls the other side out, and it says, you know what, you're wrong. So instead of saying the plaintiff's argument lacks merit, it would say the plaintiff is misconstruing the law and misrepresenting the facts, getting right out there in the other side's face. It's exciting to read. It's much more, much more energetic. But like a roller coaster, not everybody can ride that ride. And you run the risk of possibly alienating certain types of readers. Take Judge Posner in the Seventh Circuit, for example. Avant-garde writing, that's the stuff that a lot of legal writing gurus talk about. They tell you to do away with the comes now and the premises considered. Use contractions to make it more, more readable. Put your footnotes, put your citations in footnotes as opposed to in the text. It's, it's fun to read, much more approachable, but it can be distracting because a lot of times lawyers will be focused on the fact that you used a contraction as opposed to what you're actually saying. And especially with law clerks who are oftentimes reading these briefs, you can lose them. Now, most lawyers think that they're writing literature. We're not. So most lawyers, what they end up doing is they say, this is my style, this is my way of writing, and I wanna to stick to it. And I'm gonna tell you, we need to be more flexible because as lawyers, we're not writing the great American novel. We're writing for a purpose. And legal writing is a tool of persuasion, and we need to remember that. And because we're adaptable lawyers, we need to learn to adapt to different writing styles. Let's talk about the three factors you need to bear in mind whenever you're choosing and adopting a writing style. The first is think about your audience. And since America is advancing in the World Cup, I thought I'd put a soccer reference up there. So think about your audience. Obviously, it's a judge. Maybe your judge likes aggressive writing. Maybe it's more conservative, but keep that in mind. What about the appellate panel, right? What about the balance of power in a particular case. A weaker party can sometimes use aggressive writing to put the other side on the defensive and help set a different tone. A stronger party can sometimes use aggressive writing to really show their strength in a particular case. And don't forget the wider impact. That one brief you're writing now or that demand letter you're writing today, it may get viewed by a jury. It may get viewed, say, by the media in a more, in a more high profile case. Think about all these things. Remember, legal writing does not exist in a vacuum. These styles can be combined and they can be manipulated. It's a balancing act. And if you're gonna take one thing away from this, remember, you don't just have a voice, you have a choice when it comes to choosing a writing style. 
Be good, everybody. Thank you so much.